this is joint work with Dong Hu Chan, who is also in the in the audience. Um, and the paper is about how um, online misinformation leads to conflicts offline, and what we do about it, and the perverse consequences that could have that could happen. Um, all right. So just a just a brief motivation. Um, you know, it's well documented that there are a lot of misinform misinformation on social media platforms, and they uh, often incite or flame, uh, you know, uh, conflicts offline. Okay, and so just to fix ideas, one example that happens before the pandemic, you know, it seems long ago, um, is the, you know, is something that happens in Paris. Okay, um, so back in 2019, there's this fake social media uh, video circulated around um, saying that, you know, this Roma people in, in Paris kidnap some children. Um, and once this video becomes viral, uh, you know, there are a, a group of young people who, okay, there are a group of young people who um, uh, get their weapons and start attacking these uh, Roma people and, uh, you know, causing injuries. And they set their car, you know, the Roma people's cars to fire. Okay, and, and um, this is not something pleasant. And uh, obviously, societies has responded, and in particular, um, you know, different countries have attempt to to has attempt to use different efforts to make social media platform internalize the conflict costs that are driven by this uh, misinformation. Okay, and this includes, for instance, awareness campaigns. So. A famous recent example is the is the Wall Street Journal's podcast series called the Facebook Files. Um, they basically have an extensive investigation and 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 saying how Facebook's algorithms trigger polarization and and conflicts and violence. Okay, and um, there's also Congress hearings. The CEOs of Facebook, Twitter, Google, they have to regularly go to Congress and tell people what kind of social responsibilities they have they have been doing to to help. Um, fight this misinformation. There's also a, you know, a, um, a growing research program on ethical algorithms in computer science. Now, when we develop algorithms, we better make sure that these algorithms are, you know, are ethical in a sense that they internalize the, the costs they, they generate. Um, you know, governments also impose regulation, you know, legislation on misinformation, for instance. All right. So on its face, this societal efforts appear desirable and effective. What we want to show today, or what we want to argue today, is, an, is a cautionary observation concerning these societal efforts. All right, and the main result of the paper is especially that, you know, if we take a platform who um, internalize the conflict costs it's going to generate when it designs its algorithms to, to filter misinformation, these platforms could actually perversely aggra aggravate the conflicts. And the main intuition is that these citizens who are aware that the platforms fa fa you know, internalize this sort of conflict costs will become too confident of the personalized contents they read, okay? And, and, and in turn become too hostile against disagreeing opinions. And we wanna draw a um, sort of policy implications that, uh, that we are gonna show that these societal efforts are effective if and only if they're sufficiently aggressive. Okay, and so um, I'm gonna frame the talk today just to, you know, just to demonstrate formally what, what we mean here on this slide. Okay, and so the plan today, I mean, this is a applied theory paper. And so the plan today is going to first give you a model and the, uh, and the corresponding equilibrium analysis. In particular, we're gonna do two versions of the model. Okay, in the baseline version, I'm going to consider a, a platform that is self-interested. Okay, all that the platform cares is to maximize profit. Then I'm gonna move on to an alternative version of the model where the platform faces um, ethical concern to internalize conflict costs. Then I'm gonna solve for the equilibria and, you know, um, where I'm gonna compare the equilibria in these two versions and arrive at our main result, namely, um, you know, in the, in the alternative version, the equilibrium conflict costs could perhaps be larger. All right, finally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, discuss the, the related literature. Okay, 
All right, so let's begin uh, with, the, with the baseline model. This is going to be a very simple setup. I'm going to look at a one-shot game. OK. There will be a hidden state theta that is distributed normally with mean normalized to 0 and some prior precision p. Uh, so you can think of, for instance, uh, this theta represents the, the change in effectiveness of a, of a, of a COVID vaccine you know, against a new variant against uh, relative to some older version of the virus. Um, there are two, well, two parties, basically. Uh, there is a platform. And then there will be a continuum of a unit continuum of citizens. Um, each citizen i is characterized, or it, each citizen i has a bias vi, which is a real number. So what happens here is that the citizen want to learn the value of the true state by using the platform. And the bias is going to represent the, the value that each citizen would like the true state to be. Now, for, for simplicity, in this talk, I'm going to assume that the biases are commonly known. This is a very strong assumption, obviously. Um, but this is just for convenience, so I can so that I can avoid defining distributions and beliefs. Okay, and in fact, for our results, this bias can be the citizen I's private information, or it can be that nobody knows uh, for sure the biases uh, at all. Okay. All right. So this is the setup. Before I describe the the you know how the game unfolds, I want to just give you a brief timeline before I describe the detail. So. What we have in mind is the model where the platform is a, is a news intermediary, okay? Um, so before it receives any news reports or, or, or new news contributions, the platform develops an algorithm that filters misinformation. Then the nature is gonna, nature is gonna draw the true state of the world. Then the platform is going to receive um, news reports about theta uh, from some, for instance, ex external sources that we are not gonna model. And these news reports are contain the informative ones as well as the you know the uh, the fake ones that we call misinformation. And given the reports, the algorithm and, and as well as the chosen algorithm, the platform will generate some personalized contents for each citizen about the state theta. And the citizens will read these personalized contents and infer the state of theta individually. And um, you know, in, in, the, in the baseline model, we are not going to talk about conflicts. But once we get to the alternative version of the model, after the citizens do their inferences, there will be disagreements and there will be conflicts. OK. All right, so what do we mean by the, the algorithm? What we have in mind is, is actually a, a real number. So the platform, in the very beginning, is going to choose a filter f, which is a, a, a non-negative real number before theta is realized. This filter is hidden from the citizens. So I don't, for instance, know exactly what the what Facebook's algorithm is, it, it, what Facebook's algorithm is. And we're going to interpret a higher filter F as a more aggressive filter by the platform. And in a model, the citizens do not take any actions. All they do is that they, they receive information and form beliefs. Okay. Now Next, we want to think about how we model the personalized contents that the citizens receive. So once the uh, platform chooses the filter F, each citizen is going to receive an idiosyncratic signal that, you know, that we um, model as the personalized content. And this signal um, is defined as follows. First, it is, you know, this is the signal YI consists of three components, all right? So first, the signal is informative about the state theta, and hence there is a you know, theta here. But this signal is also muddled with misinformation that we uh, model as the random noise epsilon i. And uh, this is personalized. And this epsilon i uh, is normally distributed with, you know, with mean 0 and uh, with mean normalized to 0 and, and precision q plus f. Okay? And so what's happening here is that this noise is going to be uh, describing misinformation that escapes the filter. If the, if the platform chooses a high F, meaning if the platform is filtering misinformation more, more aggressively, these epsilons are more concentrated you know, at zero. And uh, so the signal Y is going to be more informative about theta. 
And Q is just going to be an exogenous parameter that describes what the, the default precision of the signal of, of, this, of, um, of this noise if the platform is not filtering at all. Okay. And, um, and is, this is personalized because this is personalized because you know, we want to capture the fact that each citizen's um, uh, information acquisition on the platform depends on, for instance, her individual subscription of new sources on the platform. Finally, this SI is also, ex is also an exogenous parameter that we want to capture as the citizen uh, as the slant in the citizen I's personalized contents. You know, as, as, I, as I said, the uh, contents that the citizen sees could well depend on the individual subscription of new sources on the platform. And these new sources could well be biased, okay? And so um, this land just captures, you know, uh, the, 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 the media bias, okay? All right, and that being said, for today, I'm gonna set SI to zero, uh, just to simplify my, my exposition. And in fact, this is not going to drive, you know, this is not going to affect the main result uh, of the paper. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk more about that later. The um, signal YI uh, is assumed to be private to the citizen. So, you know, I, I don't see what's on your phone, for, like, for example. Okay. All right. So now after receiving the signal, the citizens has to do the inferences. Okay. And, uh, and how do they do the inferences? Well, they've they basically form a state estimate, which is modeled by the posterior mean okay, of, the, of the state, given that they given the signal yi. And of course, to you know to form this, to do this inference, the citizen has to know a bit about, or has to know about the, um, the data generating, the data generating process. And because the filter f uh, that, that determines the variance of the signal uh, is hidden from the uh, you know, is hidden from the from the citizens. When the citizens do these state estimates, they have to compute this expectation EI based on what based on the filter they expect the platform has chosen. Okay, instead of the actual filter chosen by the platform. All right, and so we denote this expectation of the filter by citizen I F star I. All right. Okay, so now that's we can then define the platform's payoff. So literally, this is the platform's revenue. So once it chooses a filter F, and given the citizen's expectation of the filter it has chosen, that we you know that we collect it as F, F star, the platform's expected payoff is as follows. Basically, this is the revenue. This is the basically this is the revenue minus the cost. Okay. Um, now here, beta, tau, and c are exogenous parameters. The right side here is the cost of the, you know, of, of developing the filter and is a, is a quadratic cost. And the first part here is the revenue, okay? And um, how do we model revenue? Well, you should, how do, and, and the dominant source of, uh, the dominant revenue source of social media platforms is advertising, okay? And, and how do the platform derives more advertising revenues? Well, if it can deliver contents that attract the citizens to spend as much time on the on the platform as possible, and how, when will citizens spend as much time as possible on the platform? Well, when they enjoy the contents they're seeing on the platform. And how do we how do we model how you know the enjoyment? Uh, we we assume that the citizens enjoy the contents that are bias conforming. So if I'm seeing something that conforms my bias, or if I'm you know, uh, thinking that, you know, I'm actually being informed, I'm learning something that is, that, that is useful um, and, and closer to the truth, then I'm, more, I'm also happier, okay? And so this first component is the bias conforming component, all right? If, if the citizen I's state estimate is closer to, the, to, her, to her bias, to individual bias, the citizen is, is, is happier, okay? And this quadratic loss is gonna be smaller. So this beta is basically, a parameter that measures the, uh, the platform's benefit to provide bias conforming contents. And this second component is, uh, is a truth learning component. If citizen, if citizen I thinks that, you know, she's learning a lot about theta, this posterior variance is, is smaller. Okay, and the citizen, citizen is happier. Again, tau is just, you know, the exogenous parameter that measures the uh, platform's benefit to better provide truth learning contents. All right, now, just to make sure that we're on the same page, recall that this 
posterior inferences are computed based on the citizen's expectation because it's, 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 the citizens do not see the true filter chosen by the platform. In contrast, the outer expectation as well as the cost depends on the actual filter chosen by the platform. Okay, and why is the expectation uh, outer expectation depending on the true filter? Well, because this affect the actual signal uh, received by the by the citizens. Okay. And this distinction between the actual filter and the citizens' expectation is going to be key, um, you know, when, when we derive the result. Of course, in equilibrium, they have to be the same, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in, in, in a few slides. Okay, and the solution concept of, the, of this one-shot game is, is, is based on Nash equilibria in, in pure strategies, okay? So pure strategy is a genuine restriction. So this, this allows us to have, have tractable belief updating. Um, Nonetheless, you know, we allow the, the platform to contemplate deviation to arbitrary strategies. Okay, notice that I have, I have not defined uh, payoffs for the citizens because they do not take action. So, so we, don't, we don't need them um, in a model. All right, so what is you know, in equilibrium? So basically in equilibrium, the platform is choosing the filter to best reply to the citizen's expectation F score, okay? And, and so that this, this best reply is precisely the citizen's expectation. In other words, the, in equilibrium, the citizen's expectation has to be correct. Okay, and here I abuse notation a bit because in, in the last slide, I write that you know, F star is a collection of all the citizen's expectations, all right? But in, because in, in equilibrium, they have to be the same. They have to be correct and hence has to be the same. I'm just gonna abuse notation and say F star is a single filter that the citizens expect. All right, so I see there's a... Uh, yeah, I can read yeah. the question uh, if it would be helpful. Um, it's from Lewis Cabral, um, yeah. and he points out that the objective of the firm, the platform, uh, has two components, which are the bias and the learning about the truth component. Um, but you only give the platform one instrument, which is the filter. And exactly. I guess yep. the question is, have you thought about letting the platform change the level of slant? And does that do anything interesting? Um, so there's one, okay, so there are two reasons. Um, the first reason is that we want to think about, uh, uh, well, okay, so, okay, two, let, me, let, me respond, let me respond in two parts. The first part is that there's one, the, the key reason why I dropped slant or, or you know, the slant, why I assume that the slant is exogenous here is because I want to focus on misinformation, you know, not like, um, uh, how can the, the, the platform sense a particular information or recommend particular information and hide, hide some others, okay? Um, and the second reason is that if I introduce slant or the, the uh, platform having the ability to choose slant, um, given that all the citizens here are rational, uh, you know, they, 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 can, they can perfectly remove the, the slant chosen by the uh, by the platform, um, you know, um, when, when they do the inferences. And so unless we, we, we allow for more complicated uh, slanting strategy by the, by the or, or, you know, strategy that affects the information that the, the citizens receive. Um, I guess that being said, the, the most important reason is that I want to just, I want to focus on one single instrument, which is the ability or the, or the, or the platform's incentive to filter misinformation. But that's, that's, a, that's a good point that uh, I can, I, I'll come back to it when I, when I summarize, when I do the summary in, in, in the talk, okay? But uh, thanks for the question. All right, so, okay, so this is the, this is the model and let's look at the, um, equilibrium in the baseline in the baseline model so that with you know this model um, there's a unique equilibrium okay in the in the equilibrium the platform chooses the filter characterized by the following um, you know equation so what I want you to see here is really that marginal benefit equals marginal cost um, the left side is the marginal benefit and the right side is the marginal cost and a key observation in this in this equation that characterizes the equilibrium filter is that the filter is strictly increasing in beta, um, and it, which is the benefit to provide bias-conforming bias content 
and it's independent of tau, which is the independent of the benefit to provide truth learning component. Okay, and um, now why, so, so the interpretation really is that the platform in equilibrium filters only to better provide bias conforming contents. Okay, so the platform couldn't care less about, you know, helping citizens to learn about the truth. Well, why is this? Well, if we think about, if we just, if you look at the, the truth learning component of the platform's revenue, given the citizen's expectation F star, the, um, you know, the, the, the truth learning component is this, is this guy. And if we do a bit of algebra, we can, we can do Bayesian updating and simplify this posterior variance into this object. And notice that nothing is random here. And so we can remove the expectation operator. And this object is independent of the actual filter chosen by the platform. Okay, and so taking the, the uh, and, and, and the key of course is that the citizens do, do their posterior inferences based on, based on what they expect the platform has chosen as the, as the filter, but not the actual filter, all right? And, and, and hence, when the platform chooses its filter given the citizen's expectation, the platform really couldn't care less about this component in the revenue. Now, of course, this observation relies on normality so that we can have a posterior variance that is independent of the, of the signal uh, received by the citizens. And I'm gonna provide more discussion later. Uh, what what, what I, I will say for now is that this is not gonna be the key the fact that this posterior variance is not random, it's not going to be the key that drive our main result, which is the perverse FX result, okay? Um, now then the question to the platform is how to better provide bias conforming components, okay? To the, given the citizen's expectation. And we, we, you know, the bias conforming component is this guy. And again, we can do the algebra a bit to simplify the, the citizen I state estimate which is this guy, okay? This is really just the weighted average of the signal received by this, the citizen plus the, plus the prior mean, which is normalized to zero, okay? So these state estimates could, could, could be reinterpreted as a weighted signal, okay? If we put this back in to the bias conforming component, what is happening really here is that the platform wants to choose the filter to minimize the expected quadratic loss of this weighted signal from the citizen's biases, okay? And how could the platform uh, minimize this expected quadratic loss? Well, the platform wants to minimize the dispersion of the signals. And how do the platform you know, reduce the signal dispersion? Well, the platform filters, okay? Um, and, this, and, and the platform has a stronger incentive to filter if the benefit beta to provide bias conforming component uh, contents is higher, okay? And that gives us the, 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 uh, the first result. And I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip the other two comparative statics uh, about prior precision P and, and default precision Q, but um, you know, I'm happy to talk about that later if, if, if people are interested. Okay, now let's move on to you know, the, the uh, ethical concern, all right? Now in, equilibrium, the citizens' state estimates typically disagree, as you could probably imagine right now, because they are getting individual signals. And um, we're gonna assume that these disagreements are going to lead to conflicts that are costly for a platform that faces ethical concern. So I'm gonna define this term formally in this, two sli in, in, in this and the next slide. Um, so you can, so the first thing is we want, we we want, to, we want to define disagreement. What do we mean by, what do we mean by disagreement? Well, we want to measure uh, any two citizens disagreement by the distance of the state estimates. So you can imagine that the, the government is designing a policy uh, that could affect all, the, all you know, the society's welfare and the optimal such policy is the one that matches the true state and the citizens disagree about you know, what the optimal policy is. Okay, and so, the, the conflict cost given the realized signals of the citizens and what they expect uh, the platform has chosen as their filter is defined as follows, okay? So what is this? Well, first, this term is literally the, the disagreement between citizen I and J 
once they see their own, their own signal, Y and Yj. And the cost induced by this disagreement is again quadratic. Uh, so we have the square here. And of course, in this in the society, it's not just citizen i and j. Uh, there's a unit continuum of them. And so we do the double integral. And we do the double integral, there's a, you know, we, we double count the citizens. And so we normalize it by one half. OK. Uh, and so this is our definition of conflict cost. Now, let's move on to define what's, what's a platform uh, that faces ethical concern. So this is exactly the, uh, so in this alternative version of the model, the platform's payoff is exactly the same with an additional term that is the expected conflict cost that it induces, okay? So the first, the first line is something that we have seen. This, the second line is new, okay? And this is the expected conflict cost. Meaning, well, you know, and actually here is exogenous parameter. So if, if the platform is generating more conflict cost, the platform is, reduced, is, is, is basically getting a, a smaller payoff, all right? And so here we say that this platform faces ethical concern to mitigate conflicts. And the parameter H here is the parameter that measures the strength of the platform's ethical concern, okay? The model is otherwise identical. So the only difference between the alternative version of the model and the baseline version is the additional, um, you know, term that that uh, that captures the conflict cost. Okay. All right. Now, with this in mind, let's look at what's gonna happen to equilibrium once we introduce ethical concern. Again, there's going to be a unique equilibrium, and um, in the equilibrium, the platform chooses the filter characterized by the following equation. This is very familiar from what we have seen before in, in a few slides ago. The only change here is that there is a new term plus H that increases the platform's marginal benefit to filter. Okay, and so, and in particular, if, if, the, if, the, if the strength of every concern is larger, the platform's marginal benefit to filter is larger. Okay, um, and the intuition is, and, and so what this, implies is that the filter given ethical concern is going to be strictly larger than the filter absent ethical concern. And the intuition is very simple. It's just that the platform now has an additional incentive to filter so as to reduce the dispersion between the citizens' signals so, that to, so, so as to then reduce the disagreement between the citizens. Okay. Um, all right. Now, with, with all this in mind, we have we have we are now ready to look at the uh, the main result. Okay, um, so the main result, you know, we will look at the equilibrium conflict cost. All right, uh, which is the same thing we have seen, uh, except that now all the expectation operators are the same. Okay, and this is because, and so meaning that we do not distinguish between uh, we no longer distinguish between the platform's actual filter and the and the, uh, and the citizen's expectation of the platform filter. And this is because we're looking at equilibrium and equilibrium, the filter has to, you know, the, the citizen's expectation has to be correct. And so we are gonna use the same single filter F, okay? Um, all right, now with this definition, here's the main result. So the main result says that there exists a cutoff, no, there exists a, a you know, cutoff or threshold whatever you like to call it, um, a threshold H bar um, of, the, of the strength of ethical concerns such that the, conf the equilibrium conflict cost associated with the self-interested platform is larger than the equilibrium conflict cost associated with the platform of ethical concern if and only if the strength of ethical concern is large enough. In other words, or an immediate corollary of this main result is that if it happens that the ethical concern of a platform is not, is not large enough, but the platform has ethical concern, um, this ethical concern could, could aggravate equilibrium conflicts and increase the, the, the uh, equilibrium conflict cost. Okay, And so this is something that we, we want to um, prove or we want to shed light on. Okay, What's the intuition? Okay, so if we if we try to uh, write down the, or simplify the conflict, equilibrium conflict cost, we can write it down in this way. 
okay, in this form. And the first key observation is that this function, equilibrium conflict cost, is single picked in F in, in the filter chosen by the platform. Well, why is this? If we increase the equilibrium filter, there are two consequences. The first one is the learning effect, okay? Um, when, I, when, the, when the platform filters more aggressively, the, there will be a smaller dispersion of the signals between the citizens. And so the citizens are basically uh, learning the common state better, and that mitigates conflicts between the citizens. But on the other hand, the, there's a confidence effect. The citizens know that the platform is now filtering more aggressively, and so they put a higher weight on the signal that they receive. Okay, and 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 in particular, they're putting a higher weight on the individual signal they're going to re they're, they're receiving, and so this aggravates the citizens' disagreement with other citizens. So, with these observations in mind, the ethical concern is going to uh, mitigate equilibrium conflicts if and only if the learning effect dominates the confidence effect. Okay, um, which is the case whenever the, the uh, filter given ethical concern is sufficiently larger than the filter absent ethical concern. Okay, um, and when is this happening? Well, this has to be the case when H is sufficiently large, meaning the ethical concern has to be sufficiently strong. Now, this is sort of this, the, the roadmap of the proof. And you, can, you can take a step back and ask, why is this happening? Why does the ethical concern fail to mitigate conflicts? Okay. Well, of course, the platform understands that if it chooses a high equilibrium filter, it could aggravate conflicts because of the single picked uh, structure and because of the learning effect and the confidence effect. But once the citizens form the expectation of the, of the, um, of the filter that the platform chooses, the platform, would, the platform with, with ethical concern will internalize the conflict cost incorrectly. It will, it will internalize this object instead of the one in the previous slide where F star is F. Why is this? Well, because this first term is the weight that the citizens put on their own signal and which captures their confidence and the citizens do not, do not know the act, you know, and this is, this is characterized by the citizens' expectation, but not the platform's actual filter. And so once the platform with ethical concern internalize this object, the actual filter is not gonna affect the confidence. But with ethical concern, the, the, the platform to minimize this conflict cost, the platform to reduce this conflict cost, the platform wants to affect this term, which is to boost the filtering F to help learn, to help the citizens to learn the true state. Okay. And so the platform would always want to filter more, give it once the citizens form the expectation about what the platform is doing. Of course, then in equilibrium, the citizens correctly anticipate this platform's incentive. And, then, and so then they will adjust the expectation of the F, uh, of F store to a higher filter. Okay, and that, that ultimately yields the preferred outcome. Okay. All right, so um, one question that you may ask is, well, uh, how, how, how should, you know, when is, when, when, could, when how strong is this fresh, you know, this uh, cutoff threshold, you know? If the threshold is larger, that means that it's more likely that, well, okay. So in the proposition, we says that, we, we say that if, if the, uh, there will be no perverse outcome if the ethical concern is strong enough, namely larger than this threshold. Equivalently, that is to say, if the threshold is larger, then it's more likely that we will have a perverse outcome. And so we want to understand uh, the structure of this threshold. And to do that, let's you know, let's record that you know the p denotes the prior state position of this of you know of theta. And we can characterize or we can look at the structure of the threshold as follows: if the prior state position is sufficiently large, then this threshold is positive, and is strictly increasing in p. So when there's more prior consensus about the state, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's harder to preempt the perverse outcome. On the other hand, if the prior position is smaller, then this threshold is zero. And so literally there will be no perverse outcome. And the reason really is that when the prior position P is, is, uh, is large, P 
the citizens put a smaller weight on the signal that it, they're receiving uh, from the platform. And hence, the, the learning effect is limited and is, is more li likely to be dominated by the confidence effect. Okay. All right. So um, I think I only have a few minutes left. Um, so let me comment on you know the uh, you know the setup. So uh, you know basically, uh, clearly our results rely on the quadratic normal setup, um, and the reason for doing it is like many signaling papers in the literature, is for tractability. So it has afforded us the sharp characterization of the equilibrium and implications uh, of ethical concern. Nonetheless, we conjecture conceivably that our main insight of of perverse ethics extend to more general settings. Okay, and um, uh, you know, this is because qualitatively, the key to our perverse ethic result is the fact that the citizens form expectation of the hidden filter. And once this expectation is in place, the platform of ethical concern always want to filter more, okay? Um, to, re to reduce the dispersion of the signals. All right, so, you know, in the interest of time, let me just advertise a bit. I'm not going to talk about them in, 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 in this talk, but in the paper, we apply these results to look at the you know, government ad force uh, and, and some proposals of, of regulation, you know, misinformation leg legislation regarding misinformation, arresting people who spread misinformation, and you know, uh, forcing platforms to, to be transparent about the algorithms. We also look at the um, uh, credible citizens who are non Bayesians, and they just take whatever signals they receive as, as granted. And there, the non-zero slants would matter, okay? And, um, and, and, and then we, 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 was, we study the conflicts between the two groups, you know, the credible citizens, as well as the rational citizens that we have, we have considered today. And we then look at the effect of media literacy campaign uh, that turned the credible citizens to, into rational citizens uh, and study the effect on, on offline conflicts, okay? Um, well, I, I think I have 30 minutes left. Let me, you know, let me skip the literature. I mean, 30 seconds. Um, and just to say thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alan. Uh, also for sticking so well to time, even a few seconds ahead of time. Um, perhaps now we could go to Sunny for a five minute discussion. Mm -hmm. So, uh... Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to uh, uh, discuss this paper. I, I enjoy reading it. It's a uh, I'm not super familiar with uh, this topic. I normally uh, deal with uh, more. You know, I mean, this is the information topic I'm always familiar with. But uh, uh, this uh, although it says that no slides, but I it, the paper does remind me of uh, this figure. So uh, this uh, in my mind, the model here is a uh, like a news aggregator. From many news sources, and some of them is, uh, uh, you know, of course there are some credible ones, and then there are some not so credible ones, and then so this is a figure produced by, you know, I don't know what is the source of it, but it's uh, talking about, uh, you know, there are some more credible uh, news outlet, and then there are less credible news outlet. So when we talk about the uh, uh, filter, it, it's like drawing a line here and just don't let this kind of news to being able to uh, appear or share on let's say Twitter or Facebook. So this is a, uh, like, a, like a filter in the uh, filtering the misinformation uh, that's less reliable. But or, or on the other hand, there is also another dimension that's about bias, uh, left wing, right wing, or other kind of bias. Uh, so as a, you know, uh, the, the question asked by Professor Cabral, so there's a, this, uh, slant or censorship that is uh, uh, sometimes uh, usually in uh, Twitter and Facebook is on this side. So uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, information is not being allowed to, to share or being uh, discriminated uh, against by the algorithm. Uh, what, what the, uh, in, in practice, okay, what, what, what usually the platform does is that actually they have both. So uh, of course there are some misinformation uh, the being filtered. On the other hand, there's also you know bias in the algorithm, like what can be shared. Uh, for example, in the uh, uh, in the vaccine, uh, you know the COVID nineteen vaccine example, usually you can freely talk about how good 
you know, the vaccine is, should take vaccine, everybody should take vaccine. But on the other hand, if you, you know, talk about like, it's a vaccine, it's, a, it's fake, it's, a, it's not effective at all, it's extremely dangerous, I guess there will be some sort of, you know, uh, censorship or label on that. Uh, so so what, what happened in reality is really these two things are, are going together, especially that uh, you, your, your, your model already has an element of a bias. So it's very natural people will ask the question about uh, how these two different things play different roles. Um, uh, in, in, in my mind, I think the, uh, I, I am not an expert on, on this kind of uh, model, but I think the model is very elegant. It's uh, uh, the, 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 the weighted part, how people weight on different information. This is a, a great way to capture it. The objective function is, uh, uh, is well, well formatted to capture everything. But I think uh, one, one piece of advice I can give to make this uh, paper more attractive is uh, try to stick with example throughout the paper. It's very important to revisit the example. So at the beginning, you talk about this uh, uh, fake, way, fake video that causing this uh, complex example. And then you talk about this uh, uh, vaccine effectiveness example. Um, I think the vaccine effectiveness example is more attractive. So just, just for example, if you stick to that, uh, then, uh, so first is, uh, is there, you know, really like misinformation cause conflict example like this, uh, anti-vaccine protest that happening, we see, uh, you know, many places, uh, does it has any information, anything to, related to with the, uh, uh, you know, the filtering on, on social media or something, what, what, what has the social media been doing? Because uh, when you go to Twitter, they will, uh, they will, you should, you know, if, if you open this, uh, this link, you will see that, uh, you know, they, they will put labels about, you know, uh, whether this uh, information about COVID-19 is, uh, is, uh, attract, uh, is, uh, believe, is trustworthy or not, something that sometimes they will just delete the message. Uh, so what do platforms do in practice for this particular example? So. Uh, what do they do, you know, in, in filtering information about vaccine and uh, maybe the pandemic. And then uh, it's important to revisit up to get the result. That's, uh, uh, is it really, you know, you know, I, I know this is a, a great economic, you know, uh, 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 economic result that, uh, you know, there's a perverse uh, you know, perverse effect. We always want that is that well, perverse welfare effect, and that's uh, something uh, you know we, we like to, to write in the paper. But uh, if it will be, it will be really uh, valuable if you can uh, get us one or two example that uh, it does happen in reality. In this uh, vaccine example, does it is it possible to is it does it you know happen in reality? So people you know see the information about vaccine on uh, you know on internet and then they believe what they read is true because the misinformation has been uh, filtered out. And then people's belief became more extreme. Some people believe some, you know, the government tend to force, uh, push harder and harder on vaccine, like using the vaccine passport. And then some people strongly support it. And some people, you know, strongly against it cause this anti-vaccine protest. Uh, you know, th does this really happen? Has anything to do with the uh, uh, media, uh, you know, uh, misinformation and you know uh, filtering and then uh, and also you know you, I, I actually you, you you pass that part I actually reading but I like uh, the part about you talked about the yeah, legislation arrest cyber attack and then the transparency um, so there are there are a lot of you know you you, you mentioned these uh, different efforts about how how to design ethical algorithm in, in, in practice uh, but uh, can you know some of this? You know, when you are reviewing these uh, government policies, uh, it's also good to revisit the example. So, about the uh, uh, vaccine, what what is uh, about some you know I don't know violence uh, events. What what do the platform do? And then uh, uh, so I think I think uh, uh, you you mentioned the example at the beginning of the paper, and then you you just didn't never revisit them. I think that's something I think uh, one piece of advice I can I can provide it. And then, uh, yeah, I enjoy reading the paper and that, that's all I want to say.